You know, ladies and gentlemen, you asked me to look into transhumanism, and we're hoping that this video recording will slide by the censorship here on YouTube. And so immediately when I sit down, I start to question chat GTP as it pertains to where did the whole overarching philosophy of transhumanism come from? And I'll show you what it gave me. But I went and I did a little bit more research than this, but I don't have no problem showing you. Um, and so they start to talk about Fred Frederick Nietzsche and the Uber mansion over man and Superman and transcending the uh, traditional morality of men. At, on a scale of one to ten, I'm going to say this to you. As I went back and quickly turned on the audio of his books and put it up to 2x speed and started listening to what he had to say, I'm listening to this man's philosophies via his writings, and I'm quickly coming to understand that this man was a struggling individual. And, and I said, hold on, there's got to be a better way for me to figure out what really happened with him because this is the Internet. So I go get a synopsis of it of his actual work and listen to it and it turns out that not only was this man aware that there is a god he's speaking language that is directly in the bible but from a polar opposite position but on top of that he's a wounded individual a wounded human being genius in some of the things that he says but not so genes and all it is is it's the inversion of principles in the bible for example there's one principle where he talks about suffering and how we're to die to self over and over and over again well that sounds real real familiar that we should die to self yeah i think that's somewhere in the bible something about renewing your mind in christ jesus dying to self and so i'm sitting here and I come to realize something real quick, real fast, and in a hurry. All the times that we've listened to people like Yerno Havari, all the times that we listen to people like uh, Klaus Schwab and all these other people, this is just one big cult. I mean, it's just one huge, gigantic cult of wounded people who want to be gods. And it makes sense why they say the things that they want to say, like, you know, human beings are 100 percent hackable because they want to be God. I mean, they, they truly want to be God. Remember, Klaus, I gave you guys a video where Klaus Schwab was talking in front of people and he said, you know, uh, you are the leaders of the future. You shall be the leaders. Many of you will take these shots and some of these shots will extend your life and you can look forward to being able to upload yourself to the cloud and live forever. And your career span will last much longer. I don't know how many of you guys saw that video, but we covered it in one of these series that we were on. It's a sad thing when humans want to be God. And I do mean it because you're headed for nothing more than pure and utter disappointment. But let's get into some of the videos real quick. So this is the guy, the first guy who got the neural link um, from Elon Musk. And he's playing video games. And he says that because he has a neural link, he it's like he has aimbot in his head. And it's like he has the force. His exact words is it's like I have the force from Star Wars. My name is Nolan Arbaugh, I'm 29 years old, um, about eight years ago I was in kind of a freak diving accident and uh, dislocated my C4-C5, so I'm a complete um, quadriplegic, uh, so I'm paralyzed from below the shoulders. I love playing chess and so this is one of the things that y'all have enabled me to do, something that I wasn't able to really do much the last few years, especially not like this. Um, I had to use like a mouse stick and stuff, but now it's all uh, it's all being done with my brain. If y'all can see the cursor moving around the screen, that's that's all me, y'all. Um, 
It's pretty cool, huh? <laughs> Actually, can you pause the song just for the yeah, audio absolutely. coming through? And that was also done with your brain? Yep. It's, <laughs> it's all brain power up there. So a lot of what we started out with was attempting to move. So I would attempt to move, say, my right hand, left, right. I think it just became intuitive for me to start imagining. Now I'm going to stop right here and I'm going to say this. And I think you need to understand this. I apologize. I didn't mean to click that. I mean, ladies and gentlemen, let's think about this. And this is going to sound real rude. And I don't, I don't say this to be rude or mean. This young man had an accident. He's become a paraplegic. And he went and got this brain chip that allows his brain to interact with all these different computers that he can control stuff with his brain. But your ass is still in the wheelchair. Let that sink in. I really want you to let that sink in. I mean, think about it. Yes, you can move stuff with your brain. But you don't have no mobility. And this is the gift that they gave you? Oh, I used to have to move stuff with my mouth. Now I can move stuff with my brain. That's the gift that they gave you. Is to move stuff with your mind. But your mind, the chip that tapped into your mind can't connect to your nerves and make your legs move. Or your arms move or your hands move. Does that make any damn sense to you? I mean, I'm serious. Does that make any sense to you? Just, just ponder that question. I got a chip in my brain that allows me to move stuff with my brain, but I can't move my fingers, my arms, and my legs. This is what you present as transhumanism? I mean, this is what it is? I don't see that being such a fantastic gift at all. For example, the people who are um, who now have the ability to scan their palm and pay for stuff. That's part of transhumanism. And, and I submit to you that each and every person that's carrying one of these on them right now, we're all participating in this system in some way, shape or form because we're carrying one of these cell phones with us. Um, we're carrying a supercomputer on us at all points in time. So I submit to you that we're all taking a part of this. I'm not, I'm not like outside of this in any way, shape, or form. This was the start of it all. But nonetheless, you trying to tell me you had somebody do operation on your brain, and the best they could do was you can move stuff with your mind that was associated with electronics and computers. So basically, you just Bluetooth your brain to a computer. This is a trap beyond any other trap that I've ever seen. It's a snare beyond snares, beyond snares, a trap within a trap within a trap within a trap. I want to see something. I want to go look and see. Let's go look and see what the future holds and what's out there from a transhumanistic perspective. As far as it pertains to uh, people who are paraplegics, people who've uh, lost limbs, because this right here, this ain't it. Yeah, let's let's go see and you know as we look deeper and deeper into this transhumanism movement um you see where people want to live forever or it's being sold as if you live forever and i'm gonna say it's being sold to people as if they're going to live forever because for example the clips we just watched with a young lady who was in dire need and I want to make this point to you over and over again. This whole movement is being built on the back of people who are in need. For example, the first gentleman who got the neural link was paralyzed from neck down. But what he got in return, he didn't get the ability to walk. He got the ability to control a computer screen with his mind. You look at the people who have prosthetic arms and prosthetic legs, and they have a great prosthetic arm. Well, they can, it has digits and it can close and it can do all these different things. And that's fantastic. 
But it's the whole concept of transhumanism, which at the end of the day is men and women trying to be God and upload their brains and their consciousness to computers and being able to take on another body and live forever. When you really look at what they're offering the people, it ain't about me and you getting that offer. It's about them getting what they want. And that truly is what it brought for. The best way to put it to you is like this. If you believe for one moment that there's no cure to diabetes, there's no cure to cancer, there's no cure to the basic ailments of society, then you are gravely mistaken. Let's take the drug that came out. That's a weight loss drug that just recently came out. They hit the marketplace. How long has that weight loss drug been available to people prior to it being made on the market for you? The one that uses the the Komodo dragon uh, peptides, lizard peptides. Remember I talked to you guys about that? How long has that discovery been available? And it just became public. And what we've seen is that life extension technologies via drugs, uh, I mean, brain enhancing technology via drugs has been around for a long time, but only the elite have had it. And what they do is they give you the promise of something to give them cover while they build out everything that they want to build for themselves. We've seen this over and over again. I don't even know how much of this we need to look at to come to a conclusion, but I'm going to keep looking, but it's easy to come to the conclusion that Tucker Carlson came to, that it is an anti-human spiritual entity that wants this. I shall be like God. And that's all there is to it. Now, here's the craziest thing about this. Whether it's Frederick Nietzsche or it's um, anybody else or you're on a Havari I want you to notice that none of these people deny the existence of God they just won't compete with him and they just got beef with him and I submit to you that Frederick Nietzsche was a demonically oppressed person based on everything that I've listened to and read that he was under heavy demonic oppression manifested in drug use alcohol use and uh Full on debauchery and sexually transmitted diseases that he had. And so this entire cult of transhumanism is based on this concept of the overman or the uber mesh or the superman is birth from a demon possessed individual who died lonely and broke. Anyway. Let's get to see what Tucker has to say about this. The fact that anyone would even consider getting within a thousand miles of fucking around with a nuclear exchange just shows you that um, the the core impulse here is suicide. Yep. That's what we're really, that's what all of this is. So is and that that's why I personally think it's spiritual. I think it's, the word demonic is suddenly being overused. It's everywhere because it's real. But um, yeah, if you see a, a human movement that's anti-human, the push toward nuclear war for its own sake is by definition anti-human, I would say. AI is anti-human by definition. Mm -hmm. Transhumanism is anti-human. Do people act against their own long-term interests? Probably not, actually. No. So it's probably not human. <laughs> I mean, I'm like looking at this like very autistically. Very simply, trying to reduce it to its most basic elements, and like any movement that's anti-human is probably not human, is it? Probably did, not. Did dogs act against their own collective interest? Do caribou? Do porcupines? Do single-cell amoeba? Do sea cu cucumbers? No, none of them do. No animal does that because it's not natural. Animals are part of nature; they do natural things. People are subject to the supernatural, so they do things that are not natural like kill themselves. That's why we're the only species that kills itself, right? So when you kill yourself, whether slowly or all at once, you're being acted on by forces outside of you, spiritual forces. It's really that simple. Honestly, it's really that damn simple. I thought we was gonna dig into transhumanism and get down into it and get, it's really damn that damn simple. I, honestly, that's what it is. <laughs> 